At first, they sang their songs only in private. For them, the music was personal. It had been part of their past, shared by their families. These were songs that gave them comfort away from home in a new place that offered the possibility of a better life. They were just kids, really, who had to grow up in a hurry. But soon, the songs of these former slave children would be shared with the world as art, and they would become known as the Fisk Jubilee Singers. Keep your hand on the plow, hold on, hold on. These songs, they have a purpose behind them, and you have to feel the music, you have to feel it. Keep your hand on the plow, hold on, hold on. I say the song in my head, I allow it to transfer through my body, and I, get, I allow the song to feel me, and then I feel it, and then I present it to the audience. Many of the Jubilee Singers have been in musical training since they were three and four years old. At Fisk University, there's as much competition to become a Jubilee Singer as there is to make the basketball team at the University of Tennessee or the football team at Alabama. When you consider their accomplishments worldwide, the Fisk Jubilee Singers have earned the right to boast but humility is as much a part of their heritage as the beautiful and moving music. It's such a great legacy that to be a part of it is humbling. You cannot have a sense of arrogance. You can't have a sense of being better than anybody because you know that so many years people have been working to create and working to preserve and working to continue this legacy. and. You're just a spot in a whole circle of life. I will go or shall go to see what the end will be. As they come to understand their own history, the young singers quickly learn to honor and respect the ones who sang before them. Oh, I will go, I will go, I shall go, I shall go to see what the end will be. They pay tribute to and recognize the hardships of the first student chorus that was formed soon after the Civil War. These formerly enslaved individuals wanted to learn, especially to read and write, they wanted to read. They wanted to be able to read the Bible because they lived through slavery and that was hell. So they wanted to chart their own course. The singers were brought together by the music instructor, George White. He was also the treasurer at a time when the school was facing financial collapse. Everybody was coming up with supposed solutions White suggested a student chorus. Now that was just unheard of in the day. Students were able to do anything to save themselves and, and young African Americans. What could they do? It's still dangerous times. It's precarious in the South. This is the South on the, the cusp of the redemption movement. It was just before and the beginning of the Ku Klux Klan. But White prevailed. He believed that these young people could raise funds. The Fisk Chorus began years of difficult, demanding tours in the United States and Europe. Travel was tough, and they were burdened by racism, sickness, and death. To have students have a love for a school so much that they sacrifice so much of themselves to save their school is something that is very special and unique to Fisk University. And when you read about singers who died of tuberculosis and while on tour had strokes and didn't have enough to eat and were turned away from hotels because they were black and were not initially respected as the beautiful musicians that they were, it's something that I don't know that I could be able to do. Chubani, Chubani. Before a performance in New York City, White, the director, is praying. He's looking for a name, more than just Fisk students. He comes upon the Bible passage regarding the book of Leviticus in the year of Jubilee. 
and he announced to the troop in a very fatherly manner, children, you will be Jubilee singers. And from that announcement, the Jubilee singers for Fisk University are born. My Lord, Jubilee, 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 oh Lord. The efforts of those first Fisk Jubilee singers would eventually raise enough money to buy property and build the first permanent building for educating African Americans. Jubilee Hall still stands at Fisk University, and on the wall is a painting of the original singers commissioned by England's Queen Victoria. It's reported that the Queen asked a question about these young people, where they hail from. And she responded, I know not where they come from, but I'm sure it's a musical area. So I like to tease, that was the first uh, signal of Nashville as a musical city. They were the first troop to travel out of Nashville. They may not have had a big bus, but they did travel out of Nashville and they brought great attention to Nashville and music and education. So it shouldn't be surprising that nearly a century and a half later, the Fisk Jubilee Singers would share the stage with a long list of music celebrities, starting with Shania Twain. God bless the child who suffers. I got a call that she was in town and I didn't know who she was. But I received this call that they needed some people to do a recording with Shania Twain. So. I took the Jubilee Singers then, met her and had fun in studio recording with her. And the next thing she did was asked her to sing with her uh, during the Country Music Awards, which was in, in the Grand Ole Opry. And then she invited us to do a music video with her. The more time we spend with the Lord, the better we get to know Him. And the better we know Him, the more He fills us with His presence, and other things come second. Dr. Paul Kwame is the current director of the Jubilee Singers. He came to Fisk in 1983 from his home in Ghana, Africa. I never knew about the Jubilee Singers until I got to Fisk University and became a student here and actually joined the ensemble. I had heard the name Jubilee Singers because um, in Ghana we had people who used the name Jubilee Singers for musical ensembles. So it became very interesting to me when I got here to Fisk and actually found that this is where it all started. Ready to and sing. I love this music not because it's just Negro spirituals. I love the music because it is beautiful. I love the music more because the Negro spiritual contains messages, personally, messages directly from God, messages that give us strength, messages that strengthen our faith, messages that shed light when there is darkness, messages that give us hope. Under Dr. Kwame's direction, the Jubilee Singers have performed in some of the world's most renowned venues. They've won a Dove Award, received a Grammy nomination, and been inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame. If you mention this success to him, he will politely accept your compliments, but then quickly passes along all the credit to a higher authority. I look back at many things that happened since I became director, and I can truly only give the credit to God. There is no other way to say it, because a lot of things happened that I could not have planned, that I could not have done. He remembers receiving an invitation for the Jubilee Singers to perform at a gospel festival in Chicago. And as soon as we finished singing, a gentleman walked up to me and said, I'd like to take your group to Italy. Really? I, I was so amazed at this man just walking to me after hearing only three songs and making that commitment right there to take the Jubilee Singers to Italy. And he did. Several times. While he considers those journeys to Italy a great blessing, going home was on his heart. 
Becoming the director of the Jubilee Singers gave me the opportunity and desire to take not just the Jubilee Singers back to Ghana, but to take their music back to the roots. On a Saturday morning, he received an email from a representative of the United States Embassy in Ghana, announcing the 50th anniversary of the African nation's independence. She wanted to know whether we would be able to travel to Ghana and take part in this celebration. Right then, I knew it was done. I knew God had opened the way. And everybody was asleep at home that day. But I had to control myself. I had tears flowing down my, my eyes. I had the shouting going on within me because I knew that God had opened a big door. Some doubted he could raise the money for the trip, but Dr. Kwame went forward in faith. And in July of 2007, the Fisk Jubilee Singers boarded a plane and traveled to his homeland. One of the most important things that we were able to do, which had also been my dream, was to have these songs sung in one of the castles, places where the slaves were kept right before they were being shipped. We managed to sing in the Elmina Castle, and I'll never forget that experience. Our prayer was that by singing these songs there, we would leave the peace and love and forgiveness of God on the grounds and in the walls of Elmina Castle, and I believe we did that. The year following the African trip came yet another blessing, one more major milestone, presentation of the National Medal of the Arts, presented by President George W. Bush. Getting to meet the president, it was a once in a lifetime chance. That by far is the neatest thing that I've been able to do as a singer. In the fall of each year, this students, faculty, administrators, alumni, current Jubilee singers and former ones gather together with guests in the Clinton B. Fisk Memorial Chapel for Jubilee Day. We give thanks this morning for this annual Jubilee Day convocation. Today, oh God, we give thanks for those Jubilee singers who endured tremendous hardship so that we would have the privilege to witness this present day. It is a time to pray, to remember, and reminisce. What I remember most from the time that we were here and singing together in the Jubilee Singers and uh, spending life on this campus was we'd wake up in the morning and we'd sing, in the morning when I rise, give me Jesus. It's those memories that just really feed me, feed us, even today. After leaving the chapel, the congregation reunites for sacred ceremonies in two old Nashville cemeteries, where several of those original Fisk Jubilee singers are buried. Each new generation of singers is reminded why humility is so important to fulfilling the legacy. We have a family dynamic and we have a bond that is between us, but that bond comes from an understanding and a respect for those that came before us. And the knowledge that we have about them, it allows us to be the musicians that we are today. Those bright young people who performed in other choirs and courses or who performed solo, when Paul Kwame mixes them together and pulls them together, the Jubilee Singers are just a spectacular performing group. They are a spectacular musical experience that I hope will continue for another hundred years. I'm gonna lay down this world, gonna shoulder up, gonna shoulder up, gonna take it home to my Jesus. Good news, good news. I got a robe up in the kingdom. The hand of 
God has been and continues to be not only upon the Jubilee Singers but upon Fisk University. I strongly believe that and because of that I am expecting that God is going to do even greater things for Fisk University, for Fisk Jubilee Singers, things that would amaze people. But that would give us the opportunity to say, look what the Lord has done. I'm expecting it. Jubilee singers are still touring, still traveling, still sharing their music with the world. Most recently, they were featured in a documentary about the music of the Civil War that aired on PBS stations throughout Tennessee.